too hot. The festival came about because um, we had access to a, a, a series of films which had been recently released by the, um, the Taiwan government. So we had a set of films from the last four decades and realised that there really wasn't much of um, a space for Taiwan film in Australia and as part of our core vision at CRW to engage with all aspects of the Chinese cultural world, we thought, well, with the resources we have, we could put together a film festival, which, to my knowledge, uh, hasn't actually happened in Australia. I don't think there's been a Taiwan film festival, despite the fact that there's numerous festivals for different cinemas from around the world. Rebels of the Neon God is uh, really the first film uh, that, that made Tsai Ming Liang known for, for what he has become, which is really a, a sort of, he's, he describes himself as a slow director. Uh, there's a kind of monotony, uh, there's a sort of beat and a pulse. There's a digital soundtrack, uh, which is really inspired by the arcade games uh, of that era and the characters in the film uh, often they're, they're shown at night and they're um, moving around the streets, they're moving in and out of arcades and there's that sense of that 90s digital urban culture. And so his idea for the film was really based on um, trying to capture something alternative about urban youth at that time uh, and something uncertain. The film opens with a scene of these two friends basically breaking into a telephone box and stealing a bunch of money uh, with, a, with a power screwdriver sort of thing. So there's that sense of sort of the edge of something not quite legal, not quite you know, known, um, danger and yet the fragility of youth all within this gritty urban uh, context. Uh, and his films often have focused on you know, the marginal, the outskirts, the underside. Uh, on Friday night for the opening, there's A City of Sadness, which is really probably one of the all-time uh, masterpieces of, of Taiwanese um, recent cinema. Uh, and I would say even in terms of world cinema, it's really quite amazing. So on Saturday night, we've got Monga, which was incredibly successful, uh, and outsold Avatar at the box office. One of the reasons for that is that it has a star-studded cast of young, good-looking, very popular actors, but the film itself also deals with you know, a really high action story, which has a bit of everything. There's romance, there's action, there's the tension in, within the young gang members, um, and then the, the, visually the film itself is very lush. Uh, very, very like saturated colours, a lot of scenes of um, a particular area of, of Taipei which is a bit old, a bit rough around the edges, um, and the story also is reflecting change. There's definitely a, a cinematic Asian action movie legacy which is there, uh, and you can see that also in the the, the fact that these actors and, and the characters are so cool, <laughs> like the, the way that they're dressed, the way that they act, there's a real sense of like contemporary style and um, yeah, a real cool aspect about them which comes also from things like manga and the influence of some Japanese sort of contemporary culture probably. There's many exciting things about the film festival, but obviously one of them for us is the fact that we can work with the National Film and Sound Archive. They've been very positive about presenting this together as a way of showing that they're working on something new for the ARC Cinema and for the, the archive itself.